Welcome to this week's episode of Tech Talk. I'm your host, Michael Amorgan. And with us this week, starting off at least, is Raquel. Hello. And we're supposed to be having another guest on a little bit later on. You probably know him as Chris. So uh, don't be too surprised when we stop in. And yes, Jay Brucifer, uh, yes, no, no milk, at least not right up and now. You're free to go and get some while we wait for Chris, though. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Juan's here as well. That's great. How are you guys doing? But, um, yeah, so while we wait for Chris, Ricky, what's going on with the HomePods? Like, okay, so we talked about them a, a little bit, like, two episodes ago. They're now out. What What's going on? <laughs> They're leaving, like, this stand on table. It's kind of like... You have a coffee, a coffee table, and you have like water, and you have like a cup of water, and like the con I think it's condensation for the water is just like sitting around on the rim, so it leaves like a, like a water stain in a circular in the shape of the cup on the coffee table. So it's kind of like that for the home pod. Hmm. Kind of weird. It's almost like you need coasters for your speakers. Yeah, the home pod. Yeah. I feel that's why we have Apple's gonna fix it. They're gonna be like, oh, there's a HomePod mat. Blah, blah, blah. You can rest your HomePod on this. And they're gonna like give some type of BS reason as to why you should. I mean, it, it works with their MO, so. I mean, it kind of does. Uh, the whole accessories and add more things on a little bit later on and whatnot. Also, I heard like the device is like 300 something dollars and repair is almost 200 something dollars. Like the, the repair just involved is my shoe to purchase a new one and that's because like i was watching i was watching i fix it tear tear down video and like you basically have to destroy the home pod shell to get like deeper inside of it like, you can remove the mesh and you can move the like the layer but you just have like slight um glue on it with like just like heat gun like pry it up but like when you want to get like deeper down into like the stereo area, the speaker yeah. area, you like legit have to like pry the back casing, I mean well, the top casing off to get into it. That doesn't sound kosher. Yeah. You know what that means? That means purchase it and don't bother with it. Purchase it, use it, and call it a <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I do know I do know that they were allowing i think it was if you want have a problem with your power adapter select issues with it it will allow you to like fix it for like 29 dollars or something like that oh that's not bad but again they don't go into a whole lot of detail they just say select issues so it's like uh, is it like does my if if the power adapter is just like torn up or something do they repair it like that or uh is it if it burns up it just it stops working what what exactly constitutes it being repaired for 29 dollars crash maybe shortage in the wires like when the wires start to to like break from folding up or something like that i don't know that, that's actually a really good question i don't know what's going on with that but I am looking forward to hearing at least what people are saying about it because yeah that's regular price changing uh well repair I should say no I might as well just get something like the Sonos one or the Google Home Max or something like that at that point the the memes for the whole um home part leaving like a, a stain on your furniture is like so hilarious like I like I was on Twitter earlier and like a company was advertising themselves in like a because their logo is like a circular bottle so they had the home part on the side they had the circle and like they had like their logo inside the circle <laughs> and they wow. had their logo inside the circle it was so funny wow i, I think was... the muse sorry go on oh I, the muse for like apple products it just be so hilarious uh Jay Bruce is asking if the repairs are even applied to defects. I would assume so, considering it's a factory defect or something like that. But 
then at the same point you know they're the silicone on the bottom of the home pods are quite literally leaving pieces of silicone all, all, well, on your wooden table which is also pissing people off because apple's pretty much saying well just clean it and so people are getting pissed off that hey apple i don't need to be told to clean my table or oil my wood or anything like that it's, so it's, it's just getting worse and worse and it's like what the heck is going on here <laughs> Ah, gotta love Apple. Speaking of, um, I did mention two other uh, speaker companies earlier. The Sonos One and Google Ma Home Max. It's been uh, fairly heated this week, this past week, because people are trying to say if the um, HomePod is a really and true autophile type level. Uh, well, how should I put it? listening device and there was someone on reddit that did a seemingly very in-depth review and you know a lot of people around with this review and saying you know it's autophile quality and it's actually one of the better speakers out there if you don't want to spend over a thousand bucks on the same point though uh yahoo and consumer reports did two separate reviews and both of them said that no it's not and that um so well yahoo's i think it's coo or ceo one of the two of them uh did an independent test and said you know the results of it came back saying that the sonos one is the one that won yeah there's a slight pun on that i guess and the one that's after that is the Google Home Max with, I think, I don't remember if Siri, if the HomePod came out like the last or second to last. I think it was second to last out of four devices. Yeah. So what, what do you think, Vicky? I've heard... I've heard a lot of people say good things about it and the sound quality, but honestly, I didn't expect it to be like a decent sound. I expected it to be okay, but I didn't expect it to be like a wow type of sound quality. And like I know Sonos has good quality and Google Max from what I've like seen in videos since I don't own one, <laughs> it seems like they have like good quality as well. I think the, the the main thing that Apple has, like with the HomePod, is the 360 speaker. I think yes. I think that's that's mainly it, and the fact that you could speak to Siri without having to like shout over the music. Some persons reported that that with the Google and the Google Home, you'd have to like kind of like shout over your music if you have the volume up really loud because it wouldn't recognize your voice oh well, i mean okay yeah i saw um a mkbhd he was unboxing his and he was playing music really loud said siri like in a normal voice and it picked up on his voice i read reviews as well saying like he went the person went to the other side of the room and whispered siri and it picked up on his voice i kind of i'm hesitant to believe that one but <laughs> um, Siri is a creeper. I should be listening. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be speaking and she's still be listening to you. But I mean, here's the thing though. At the same point, Siri seems dumber on the HomePod than on the iPhone. Like, there were tests that were done, and um, I think they were saying that. The one that got most questions right was Google, um, the Google Assistant on like JBL speakers and a bunch of other third party speakers. And that had 81%. Then it was Alexa, I believe, with 62, 64, sorry. And then HomePods only got 52% of the, the questions right. I can't believe that because the, the, Siri on the phones, it's okay, but like what I've seen you guys do with um, Google Assistant, it's kind of like, like I'm kind of envy y'all because I can't do it with Siri. She's kind of like 
dominant scent and it's probably she's probably even she's probably dumber on the home pod because the new product new software and like they're still trying to fully integrate her and make it smarter on the home pods whereas they had um ios and serial ios for like years so like, they had their moments to tweak all uh, like by maybe two percent because i i feel like they didn't really do much at all but like, yeah they had their moments to like tweak a little bit more than for them to do it with the home pod but maybe maybe she may have some improvements in the upcoming year considering that they're rumored to not have any major updates with their software so yeah they're just gonna like fix previous issues so maybe they may fix all with that mm, you mean Wishful like thinking. them fixing the the new bug that's come out just recently like just one indian <laughs> character and you pretty much uh crash your iphone yeah, and it could be in iMessage, it could be in WhatsApp, it could be on Facebook. It could be quite literally anywhere. This one character will shut down you and crash your iPhone completely. I think like this is probably like the worst one. Because they had, they had issues where like, if you send like, somebody a text message, it would crash your phone. But it's usually mainly, but it was mainly in like iMessage or SMS messages. It wasn't like far but it wasn't so broad like it was on facebook whatsapp and, like on web like if you search it then it put crash your phone but it just this i think this is probably the worst one they'll probably patch it later on just hopefully you don't see the character before <laughs> before <laughs> before they patch it like i am just waiting for people to just like put this on facebook and just like be malicious about it but at the same point i really hope people don't you know one of my youtubers just posted a video and i think he had the caption the heading i'm so glad i didn't open it off my phone oh my god that would have been <laughs> oh, bad i'm gonna watch this on my laptop yeah be glad you didn't um i don't i don't know Google's, I mean, wow, Google. Apple's had this same kind of thing happen a number of times. Links uh, before was the same. Well, something very similar. It was Hindi. And I, I think they really need to try and take a look at that Hindi language that they have. Just to uh, work out these bugs. And to fix things 100% instead of just like fixing it temporarily and just go about it and just leave it alone until it becomes a bigger problem and then you want to fix it 100% later mm -hmm. pretty much i that i could that a bug crash is like a little small thing for them and it's like oh well you know just throw this little patch on it and we can deal with it later that makes me wonder how long has this bug actually been around oh that makes me wonder as well it, it might have been around for a while and people are just finding out about it Unless there, unless it's um, a specific OS issue that has this bug, and like if it has been around for a while, then I feel bad for those who like those people who actually use that character every once in a while, but as their daily language, because then that means they've pretty much been having to deal with that for a while now. Shame. <laughs> <sighs> I yes. feel bad for them. Now, Mr. like you pointed out. Yeah. Like, I I really hope this is something that's kind of new. I like just came out in this recent like update or something like that. And even then, I still feel bad for them, especially if they're using it every day. But, uh, yes, Mr. Wan. Uh, your iPhone is supposed to be secure. Yes. Yes. That was the idea behind it, I believe, Vicky. Yep, it's supposed to be secure. It's supposed to just work. Like you take out the box and it just works. Speaking of, wasn't there also a source code leak that happened not so long ago? Um, I believe they were saying that it, pretty much the source code for one of the older versions, I think it's like three years ago. Uh, well, from the iOS version from three years ago, roughly. The source code for it got uh, leaked onto GitHub and people got access to it. 
uh, security people were saying, oh, well, this is going to give us access into uh, the inner workings of how Apple codes, so on and so forth. And maybe tell us on how to do certain things like, I guess some people were looking as well for jailbreaking with an untethered jailbreak. Or maybe something a little bit more malicious. Um, I know Apple was pretty much brushed it off saying, oh, well, it's three years ago. It's nothing really that important. Don't worry about it. And um, there's no secret formula inside their coding. Essentially, it's just code uh, that will help people figure out how Apple runs their software. Found it really odd when I read that. And they just brush it. They, they probably feel as though since it was a software leak from like three years ago, and most of their phones now running the like the updated OS or maybe like iOS ten, and not you know even iOS eight. So they're probably they're probably brushing it off for like that reason. Or oh, they could brush it off in the face and then try to resolve it internally to make it look like they're not they're not really 100% checking for it to make it not seem as though it's a big deal and then fix it behind the scenes. I, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure what they're doing with it. It just seems really weird. And then there's the whole thing. The point of it is that the source code got leaked, which means someone inside there leaked it. Probably the same person. Apple. Probably the same person who leaked all the information for the iPhones for last year. Could be. Maybe it's, well, maybe it's the same type of person that leaked a previous piece of information, well, a piece, new piece of information to someone else, uh, saying that there's probably going to be a 6-inch LCD version of the iPhone that resembles the iPhone 10. Ten. Are you excited for that or no? Um, I guess I'm not gonna change my phone until like next year or well, year after, whichever one. Um, it'd be pretty interesting, but like they're saying, well, rumors are saying that you know, next year or well, this year's iPhone is gonna have the same house and it look as the 10, but it's gonna have like a little two and like it's like a two and down. In regards to features for it so i think i think yeah because they don't want to drop the price because they, they don't want to lose that thousand dollar phone privilege they, they need to they need to i feel like they need to as well and when Cause... they drop the price it's going to be like i just spent a thousand dollars on this phone and then this year i'll drop the price same thing i will probably improved it and it's cheaper I also need to like sit down and, and think. Yeah. See, I, I, I really would like them to drop the price simply because they're influenced. And if they keep it that they keep their prices up that high, the other companies are going to feel as though they can sell phones at that price. And it's not okay. I mean, they've already been doing that. And you're right. I, I don't feel it's okay either. We've gone from phones costing five to six to maybe seven hundred bucks to google coming out with a really great phone for like four hundred bucks three to four hundred bucks and then they got influenced again and then boom you get a phone for like six hundred seven hundred bucks again so we're pretty much right back to where we were and then you now have these thousand dollar phones with yeah. uh, 128 gigs and stuff like that so it's kind of like Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my Pixel 2. Um, I did not love that price, though. My 428 gigs. That that hurt. That hurt a lot. I used to get four. I used to get 128. The the what you, um oh man the the the. I can't feel anyway. The lower end model iPhone 10 is only like 64 gigs, and you spent a thousand dollars for that. So at least you got more for your That's money. True. That is true. 
Now, apparently that's supposed to be one of the three phones that they're bringing out next year, though. So there's still two other phones that may, that like, we may find one that's more higher end. I don't know. What do you think? Or is it going to be back to, like, cheap phone, well, affordable phone, cheap phone. Um, the standard and then the plus or what? No, I, I originally thought it was going to be similar to how, um, a lot of places online are like, meaning like nine to five Mac and Mac rooms and stuff like that. They had like a little mock-up as to what the iPhones this year would look like. Um, it was the, it was the LCD version of the iPhone 10 housing, but at the original iPhone size, well, like the iPhone, not, not the plus models, the other models size. So then it was going to be like an iPhone 10, and it's going to be like an iPhone lap with like the middle ground, which is going to be the same size as the 10, and then it's going to be an iPhone that looks like the 10, but it's going to be the size of the plus. It's going to be like an iPhone 10 plus mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. So I really thought that's how it's got, that was going to go, but I'm not sure. I don't know if they're going to remove the middle size, the middle ground size, and just stick it with the two tears instead of three. I don't know if they're going to go back. I don't know either. I, I do remember this, the same people who said the six inch LCD that it's going to be three phones. So I don't know. I don't, I don't, Apple needs to figure out what they're doing. They already screwed up a little bit by jumping the gun with the 10 from <laughs> eight to 10, in my opinion, at least, because it's going to be interesting to see what they do going forward. I want to see what the new iPhone is going to be named. If it's going to be named the iPhone or if they're actually going to give it like a number. If they just go with iPhone, that's going to just be weird in my opinion. Because <laughs> what do you do with the next, the year after that? The iPhone reimagined? They probably just pick up from, from the same number. They're probably going to be like, oh, last year you guys had the iPhone. This year, are we going to give you guys the iPhone 11? Hmm. Yeah, see, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> Not at all. That has like a bad ring, iPhone 11. It does. It really does. I really wonder what they're going to be. You might have to get the iPhone 20. <sighs> at that point, you, you need a new, you need a new line. Yeah, I want to, I wonder what they're going to name it for real. For the next couple of years. One saying, what about the iPhone 100 or 124? <sighs> but see, that, that kind of raises another thing. Like, these brands, they're doing stuff like S9, S10, or iPhone 10, and stuff like that. And it's like, when are you going to let these brands die? Samsung's already going out with the Alpha line and the J line and stuff like that, and they're making them more high end. And some of these devices, I'm seeing like they're taking stuff from the flagship devices that just came out last year. I'm putting them on the lower models right here. I noticed that. So it's kind of like, are you going to see a change eventually into the new brand, or like what's what's gonna go happen there? I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, just to keep things down, unless you're going to be going like iPhone 2018, iPhone 2019, or iPhone 19, and just keep. Well, see, then you go right back to it by year and by in numbers. And so it's like that's probably what, what that's probably doing? why they changed because they changed the i like the they changed the regular iPads their name. They just name it iPad now. Right, like they, and then they, they just have it like iPad Air 2 and well, they remove iPad from whichever number they had. They stopped that, and they had iPad Air, they had iPad Air 2, and then now they just have iPad. So that's probably why they changed it. I have, mm -hmm. I have no clue as to why, but I don't know. Probably the number, they, same, probably the same number of reasons to why they changed it. Yeah, I think you might be right with the whole just keeping it as iPhone and then. Just Putting the year after it. And then just changing the model numbers. You might be right with that. 
that yeah. especially now that you've like brought up the fact that you know they're doing it with their other products i wonder i wonder what they're going to do with the apple watches if they're going to continue going by series with the hit mm. apple watch series 10 I mean, it kind of rolls off a little bit easier, though. Than iPhone, iPhone 8. Than iPhone 11. Oh, man. Apple Series 11. Well, that's still, that's still a mouthful. But it is a mouthful. So, Apple Watch 2011. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's still weird. But... Moving on to a completely different topic. Yes. Uh, apparently, Amazon is trying to take over the world. And I say that because they're <laughs> just, but they are trying to take over the delivery business, it seems, in the, at least in the United States for now. Um, yeah, they, they pretty much want to start delivering stuff and competing with the likes of DHL, UPS, UPSPS, uh, FedEx those kind of companies and delivering stuff not only for amazon purchases but any purchase or anything that you want shipped so when they come and take over the shipping game sounds like it and i'm, I'm kind of wondering like, okay will they start to spread into other countries or will they just be the united states And those places have like brick and mortar stores for people to go into and like send stuff off. Doesn't mean Amazon's gonna do the same thing? Mm. They probably will. Um since I, I I really feel like Amazon has everything and Amazon has taken over the world from like before this. But <laughs> but they probably will. Um and it would also go because on amazon have like the amazon home feature where like you could leave oh it's like amazon amazon key it's amazon something where you can where they're able to like go in your mm -hmm. house and they leave the package there like this this can go hand in hand with that as well if they start their own shipment company but then again that also still raises my my whole point if they're getting into the shipment business then that raises the risk for privacy because there's already been two reported cases of people like amazon delivery men going into people's homes and just wandering around and granted both of those instances amazon said they like resolved it and like spoke to those either spoke or out like fired the delivery person i don't know but it was resolved, whatever that means, and that's not the type of thing that they're going for. And yes, it's only two people, but when you're going for an entire country, ew. I don't know. I think they could probably take it slow and then start up. So I'm pretty sure UPS and FedEx didn't get to where they are now in just one day. So like if, if that if that's what they're interested in doing, then maybe they should take it slow and then like blossom. And like that that delivery man like traveling around your house is just so creepy. It is. Like one of the reports apparently the person lives in a four story house and the um well, delivery the guy, say he got lost. So well, seemingly or something, he went inside the elevator, went up to the fourth floor which was the guy's bedroom and the guy was home in his bed and didn't know how to react other than eventually screaming get out of my house oh but i tried to deliver that package directly to him in his room <laughs> in his room that is so creepy apparently there are people that say that they've had delivery men like deliver stuff to their couch as well with them on their couch or wherever it is like so it's i don't know it's I probably what what he went to do 
don't know. But I feel like like you have to contact the person to see if they're home before you just like barge into their apartment or like their home and go to deliver something to like their room or their couch. Well, I mean, the whole purpose of it was they open your door, they put it right by your door, and then they leave. They leave. That's what I thought the purpose was. That's what I thought the purpose for it was for as well. So your package don't be outside, like just outside exactly. waiting, and someone can like remove. It. Even though it's a federal offense, someone can still remove your package and go about their business. So I mean, it's uh, I don't know. It's it's weird. And then there's there's other reports that I believe they were saying that like Amazon has taken. Um, packages that like they drop off a package and then took like a ups package by accident maybe or, and stuff like that and it's like really they sabotaged already i i just see this going bad i mean i see a lot of good for it but i see a lot of bad as well now yeah, i can see oh I was gonna say I could see actually I was gonna say I could actually see where where you're coming from where there can be some good to it, and then it can also go sideways on Amazon part. But you can always tell if it if it flops or not because they're just gonna like silently kill off the feature. So that's how you tell if it flops. I mean the weird thing about it is Amazon has a lot of things they don't really talk about. Like did you know they actually have something like on their site that if you have a US bank account, um, you can pretty much connect your checking account to it, charge up your Amazon account, and they give you like money, like credit back? Yeah, I didn't know that. See? It's things like this, like they have a lot of different things they don't really talk about, they don't do it or anything like that. And so you could then use that credit towards a purchase on Amazon. So it's like even if they don't aren't talking about something, it doesn't mean that it's gone. But I, I do agree with you that they should do it like start off in a city, then a state, then a few more states. Kind of like what Google Fiber tried to do but has since failed. But hopefully they don't fail and they don't have a huge issue on their hands, I guess. So we can wish them the best. I mean, if they do fail, they have enough money to bounce back. Not so... to Isn't like... The guy who owns it is actually the richest guy in the world right now, isn't he? I'm not sure. Let me check on Google. Which is uh, in the world. 27 out of 2019. Oh, Zuckerberg is number three. Interesting. Who's number one, though? Um, oh, man. It vanished. Who's the richest guy in the world? Um, yes. The, the, the. Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, the Jeff yeah. Bezos. Yes. Yes, something like that. Then Bill Gates. Then oh, I should know Zuckerberg is number five. Oh. Well, Vicky, have you ever used a dating app? Nah. Have you ever used a dating site? No. I'm, I'm kind of content with being <laughs> being by myself. Okay. And if I do find somebody, I find them the, the, the usual way. Like I buck you while I'm out at school or something. Okay. Have well, you ever so used a dating app? I have. Yeah, I have. In the past, but I have. <laughs> um, Here's a question. Have you ever heard of Tinder? Yes. Okay. If someone was to... Well, you know how it works, right? Yeah. You swipe. Blah, 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 you like the picture and then... Like, I think eventually you start a conversation. 
like later on sometime on the line something like that um two of you would swipe uh whatever way I generally i think it's right on each other um that creates a connection and then preferably you guys start talking um but there's been an app that's been out for a while now that has been more focused towards women it's called bumble and what essentially what it is is that you go through the same motions and you swipe right on each other but the woman has to be the one that talks first and she has 24 hours to do so unless you give her a 24 hour boost to see if she takes it or not and if she, pretty much and if she doesn't do it i think you get to do it twice either once or twice um essentially what it happens is that uh well you guys don't get connected she i think you guys go back into the list together at some point I, i'm not 100 percent sure what happens but you guys don't become a connection anymore so you can't talk to her she can't she's already given up her chance to talk to you rip tinder has apparently developed an opt-in feature for something very similar uh for women that prefer to either be the ones that are talking first or i guess in some cases uh keep some creepers from inside their inbox uh even though well, really? how is that see that that's that's part of the thing you swipe right on the person it means that they interest you which means you should want to start a conversation with that person I'm a, I'm a little lost, <laughs> but, um, essentially, okay, let me ask you, would you prefer being the one that's, um, talking first or the one that's being, like, approached? Mm, um, I'd say maybe approached. I'm not, I'm not really cool. I'm not really good with, like, having conversations with people, but if you come to me, and he started speaking to me, I'm kind of like, I have to, to, I feel inclined to like answer you back. And I was like, well, I to you and I like, have conversations with you in a sense. If okay, I'm so making sense, yeah. Has a, has a question, another question after several questions. Um, if you had a real life filter to say, okay, well, block the per well not block but to where someone would come up say they want to have a conversation with you or at least you like are in the same vicinity they walk up there's this filter here and then you have to choose if you want to talk to them or not what would you typically do um usually i just walk away and continue going on my business <laughs> <laughs> but if there wasn't a filter and like you have to approach me then i'd have a conversation but if not then i'm just gonna continue going with my mary okay and why would you do that um because i'm not really interested in speaking to anybody so especially like if i go to a store in a sense like i went did i start to pick up a certain item uh, like you disturbing me while I'm thinking, kind of figure what I'm getting. Oh yeah, I'm, like I'm not gonna be interested in, in like speaking, so I'm gonna like have my filter up. Maybe that's maybe that's the idea that's behind the idea. it. Um, where you are online, okay, great. You you like this person, they like you back, but you want the power to say I want to talk to them instead of like just being randomly approached and then the next thing you know they are trying to ask for your phone number and sending dick pics or something creepers. Like that. yeah i mean people can look can good look. and the information about them can sound good yeah. but then like when the actual conversation starts it's kind of like it's bleh. yeah mm. it's like meh yeah. so that's probably, that's probably what, what it's for and then it does raise the feminist aspect of it as well because then it's like giving power to the women i guess you know women love power 
I am going to keep my mouth shut with that one. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's an interesting idea. I, I would be interested to see the statistics of how many women actually opt into it. And I'm glad that it's not an opt out type of thing. So there was one per there was one article that was saying Facebook would be a great place to like eventually become a Tinder kind of thing because it already has a lot of your personal information, your interests, your likes, your friends, that kind of thing. So if Facebook was to do something similar, I mean that could be interesting. Turn Facebook into a dating site? Well, uh, somewhat. How is it? I'll give Facebook the future to have a dating site. Yeah. Like a, a different section of Facebook or something. Facebook dates. <laughs> oh gosh. I can see that going all sorts of wrong. But um. What's Mr. Wan saying? Men do not want to talk to all girls too. Quite true. Quite true. But I mean this is a... I hate to say it, but it's it's a sexist world that we still live in where women can walk into men's bathrooms without any problems. And if men say something to them, then it's no issue. Um, if... Oh, we actually had it dropped for a second there. Um, where women feel the need to protect themselves against guys from being messaged first and not the other way around so i mean the world's trying to become a better place sexism is still a thing both ways and i mean we just have to keep trying to do better now on to a lighter topic uh for those of you who have one of the more affordable laptops or you know mobile devices like that uh or even some computers like tower desktop kind of computers if you have an internal um, graphics processor unit or gpu you eventually might not actually need those anymore reason why I'm saying that is because AMD has started something off that's pretty interesting. Their basic chip, so that's their CPU, actually has it built in and provides enough power, essentially, to be able to run your graphic, well, run like a graphics processor unit for your computer. Now it's going to be able to do some basic gaming. Don't expect like ultra levels or anything like that, but I don't know. Like, I think this is a good step forward to saving costs, especially considering that, uh, GPUs are going up in price because of the whole, mm, well, cryptocurrency mining thing. That's everyone's going for GPUs and cranking up the price. Because I think they were saying that you could buy one at, like, a buy a, a GPU, let's say, like, an NVIDIA card. And you can get that at the regular price, turn around, put that on eBay or Amazon or something like that, and get almost double the price for it because of the demand for it. Which is insane. It is. Oh, man. I hate to see people get ripped off, like, so... And I mean, it's, I'm kind of wondering like how the actual like GPU makers like Nvidia and AMD are really like, how do they feel about it? I know they're, they're trying to make more, but every time they sell them, people do that kind of stuff. Unless you, know, you are lucky and you actually manage to get one for yourself. Or is it just kind of like, kind of like hey, we're selling stuff. So, so, well, you know, the money's still going in our pocket, so after y'all purchase it, y'all do whatever y'all want. That type of sense. Yeah, exactly. 
that is not hurting their bottom line, unless, I guess, in that way. They're selling it for their cost that they're doing it, and it's just people that's upselling. But I mean, at some point, it's got to hurt the industry on a whole as well, because then people are going to start going for lower end ones just to try and be able to use a GPU, for example. If they can't get a um, NVIDIA 8, um, 1080, then they may end up getting a 1060 or a 1050 or a 900 and something. And that's not good because then we're going backwards with stuff. I mean, granted, 1060 is still fine. I came out with the same others, but that's not what I think if I was in their place, I would want. Now, one of our last topics, and it seems we're going to be missing Chris for today's episode, but Facebook is doing some very weird, weird stuff. For starters, they came out with a public to-do list. I don't know about you, but I won't want, I would not want my public to-do list, well, my to-do list to be public. How about it's really you? weird. Like, what what am I gonna put on it for everyone to look at? I I thought oh that might be you know it's gonna benefit those persons that overshare. Yeah, but I mean, do we really need that? That's that's the point. Know. It's oversharing. I don't, I don't even know. I feel like they're probably like testing the waters, trying to figure out what they're going to do next or what they're going to add next to Facebook. So they're testing all the stuff, just releasing them and seeing and watch how the like, consumers bite. So if they bite the bait, then they know, you know, we want to keep this and like, we're going to fund this and like, we're going to try to improve this and have this implemented into our app. But if they don't bite the bait, then, you know, we need to go back to the drawing board. But the, the public to-do list is kind of weird. Well... Mr. Vaughn, it's not really so much that you see how people think, at least that's not the way that I'm seeing it. It's, it's kind of like your own checklist. Say if you're going to the grocery store and you want to say you want to get chicken, eggs, some vegetables, that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. When well, you mean like that, learning how people are going to improve, ah. I, I guess. Yeah, sure. You could do something like that. Cause then, something like that. It'd make it so, more. Yeah. Like, I can see even people on Twitch, like, on their social media or something like that. Or just regular, like, people who put up the information. New Year's resolutions, which people probably have already given up on at this point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, it can be, like, the, um... I don't know if you've seen it, but, like, on Twitter, when someone would tweet something, and, like, they'd go back, and they would quote the tweet, and then they'd be, like, they'd say, like, oh, you know... Um, just wanted to confirm that this is still true and this is happening and blah 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 stuff like that. Maybe it's going to be like that. Maybe, or it could be like I wonder where I was, like where I'll be in 2020. 2020 comes, I'm in my bed. I'm probably going to be the same place as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> someone watching, someone watching anime. That's correct. <laughs> But, I mean, it, it could be interesting, because it could be, like, your to-do list for the year, and so let's say uh, this stream, for example, we want to hit uh, 200 viewers on at one time. So that'll be one thing on the checklist. And then we hit it, we, we click that, and it eventually shows up. But then again, at that point, who's really going to be checking this checklist? It's probably going to be buried so far deep down. I, I don't know. Um, and then, I mean, it's, it would have to be time centric, in my opinion. Like, it would have to be within that same few days before Facebook yeah, decides, Facebook. you know, this is no longer relevant content. Yeah, then they're going to remove it. Hmm. I would say every two weeks, a month max, in case like you have like a monthly task list. 
but two months and like extend it further than that, it would be a bit much. Yeah, it would. Now, the next thing that Facebook is doing that's kind of odd is some time ago they purchased a company called Onavo. Now, Onavo was great as a company and the services that they provided. They provided two apps for both Android and iPhone. The first one was called Onavo Count. And, well, actually it was, yeah, Onavo Count, and then they eventually rolled out Onavo Tech. Onavo Count pretty much allowed you before Androids really had it built in. And since iPhones still don't really give you crap and the information about it, it gives you a little bit like monthly or however long you want to do. And it'll tell you how much data you've used for X period amount of time. Um, which again was great for that time period. And I thought they would still continue it when Facebook bought it, but they've made it just only centralized to like one or two countries now. I think that's probably what they're beta testing it or they just have it hidden away. But they've kept the other program or the other app, I should say, Onavo Protect out, which is a VPN, which apparently they're collecting information from, which is the reason why they knew when they rolled out uh, stories kind of stuff that the Snapchat uh, usage went down or, you know, things like that, because people were using the, the VPN during that time and whatnot. So they saw less traffic, but people are getting an up in arms, not so much that they have taken away a novel count, but more so that Facebook isn't more upfront in telling people that it's a Facebook product and that they are getting your information and using it because it it is not like it's called facebook protect it's still called a novel protect there's no real information saying that facebook is taking the information other than some articles that have found this out so i don't know it's it does seem a little scummy to me that they're doing yes. it sketchy but in the world of technology i can feel like everybody doing something shady in my opinion so, uh, I just wish people would be more transparent with this kind of stuff. Make it well known, make it publicized. Like, yeah. Even, cause when even you go if you have to happen like a little fine print or something, like at least just like have a different someone to say, oh, you know, but I read it. Or someone be like, oh, you know, I didn't read it, but I support the fine print. Even the first, like, say, if you open it up, I'm going to Facebook, you can open up the side. And then, like, when you click on protect, because that's where it's, what it's just called there, it comes up and says, Onavo, Facebook was per has purchased Onavo, the information might be used, or something like that. Even if it's just a one-time thing, at least it would have been said at least once. Yeah, it would have been pointed out to the consumers that, hey, you know, this is what we're doing, and not just, oh, you know, we're going to sneak and do this behind your back. And then when we get caught, then we're going to mention it and be like, oh, you know, XYZ was the case and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it would, it would have been nice for them to like, even to like what, they, what you said, like just like show us like a little splash screen for like a one time usage, even if like they had to do it that, that long and to show us that they're doing it instead of just doing it behind our backs and telling us. I mean, they don't maybe have, have to build it into Facebook. Build it into the app so that like that's uh like a little intro screen to it or something like that so not everyone has to see it when they click on protect wondering what it is but i don't know i haven't actually taken a look at the side menus on my facebook <laughs> there's a lot of crap inside there yeah I'm, I'm a twitter girl i haven't really I don't know. I have to, I'm, I'm going to peek at my Facebook and I'm going to see exactly what's, what's on the side there. Never have actually looked. 
And the last thing about Facebook is that their two-factor authentication or 2FA, um, which you would give it your phone number and it would send you a text message and like, just to verify you. Apparently people are getting spam texts from it. And what's worse is that when people are responding to those spam texts, it's ending up on their Facebook page. <laughs> it's it's not go, funny. Facebook. It's 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 bad. Like <laughs> you you're you're already spamming people with stuff. And then you're gonna send you're gonna automatically post the replies to their page. Let me see. Um let's see bizarre design elements seem to have gone largely unnoticed for quite some time. Bay Area software engineer Gabriel Lewis noticed this earlier this week when Facebook was using the same cell phone number he used for two-factor authentication, which offers a more secure way to log in, blah, blah, blah. Even worse, it seems that replying to the message with any message, such as, please stop, auto posts that message to your Facebook profile, and it doesn't stop the messages either. Oh, my. Um, but it occurs with any reply to the text message, and other users have popped in on Twitter to say both Facebook and Instagram. Oh, lovely. Have spammed them with notifications to their two factor authentication. Um, I can't. Blah. 2FA phone number. Um, in Lewis's case, he says he never opted into n notifications via text messaging in the first place. Uh. Apparently his case has steam, gained steam today when a prominent technology critic and sociologist for a second there, I had to make sure I didn't say Scientologist. Um <laughs> Zainab Tufiki. If I said that name wrong, I deeply apologize. With Tufiki? Oh. T-U-F-E-K-C-I hmm. Interesting last yeah. name. Yes. Yeah. Um, but apparently they tweeted about it in a series of harsh criticisms of Facebook and its behavior regarding alleged juicing of its engagement metrics. And the models that can be taken two different kind of ways. Um, apparently they were saying abusing the authentication process is unconsciousable. Uh, SMS shouldn't be used for engagement anyway. Opens up people to phishing under the best of circumstances. Facebook, please stop. This growing mindset is not at the root of so much of the worst effects in this platform. You'd still be fabulously wealthy without this suck. This is soulless. This is how we've trained people to be fish. Ah. Uh, So, yeah, you could probably go on Twitter, find a lot more people talking about this. I will, I will check it out. Okay, there are more. Twitter, Twitter is like the region place for people. And apparently it, yeah, I mean, from what I'm seeing, it kind of looks like it's locked. But it still is being posted. There's no context to it when it's being posted. Quite literally, they sent the person a... Uh, a message saying Gabriel so and so shared a link they texted stop please stop stop and then showing up on their profile like each individual like post not even like in a thread or anything like that oh my. poor guy oh wow but yeah that ends our episode for today. Unless Vicky, there's anything that I missed? Um, I just want to make a dress. Snapchat's issue. <laughs> I think that's, that's that's about it. The humans have been craving about on social media for like the past, <laughs> like the weekend. It was it was hilarious. People, nothing got me more than when MKBHD made a video saying he was moving away from Snap because of their design and the lack of thought process, and he was moving over to Instagram. 
And in his Snapchat Discover feed was his videos on YouTube saying that he was moving away. Yep. <sighs> that 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 entertained me to no end. Like people actually got a petition and got people to like sign this petition to snap it to to change their UI back to how it was. And I saw see if people taking this. I think they actually got a lot of people. I don't remember if it was like five hundred thousand or a million, something mm -hmm. somewhere up in there. They got a good amount. It's amazing and how then, people can like find people can like find support when like it comes down to like something on Snapchat. We can't find for something more like, beneficial. But at the same point, if I remember correctly, Instagram I'm paraphrasing heavily here, but pretty much said suck it. You're not getting the change. Yep. I'll send you what Snapchat said. I mean, I'll admit. They said yeah. that like it takes people time to get used to a new design, so they're probably just gonna get used to it on holiday. So, like the design for it's weird. Like, oh, you okay, have you still, it? Yeah, I have it. You still start off with the same like screen here, and then you got your friends over on the this side over here, just like how it always was. But uh, when you Go over to where your your friends would normally play. Like you see this, and it's weird. Um, oh wait, you can't see it on the on the um feed here. Uh, it was on the discovery page. I actually yeah. thought when they addressed, it, I actually thought it was a pretty good idea because when they first implemented discovery. Like back in the day, because I, I actually haven't used my Snatch at 100% since like 2015. But like when I first introduced it back in the day, I always felt like it was kind of redundant because they had it twice. So they had it on the main story page. And then like when you swipe like left to go right, they had like a whole separate discovery page there. So it was kind of like, which one do you guys want? Do you guys want to integrate it to my stories so or my friends are going to be posting? Or do you guys want to have like a separate area for it? So like when I saw them create a separate area, I said, like, oh, you know, so I've been asking for from like back then, but I don't use Snapchat anymore. So it's like, it's kind of useless for me now. But the first is just like, just went about, <laughs> just went about like, you're so upset about like the update. And I thought it was pretty decent. Well, I, like, mean I think it makes sense that people are upset because like okay let's let's take a look at mine uh, open this up and pull that back okay so this chick right here i don't know her i got her breast jiggling all, all up on my screen i don't know her you saying bulk and then we've of course got the stories from like daily mail and cats are weird and national geographic and stuff like that oh that's, that's kind of like their their solution to whatsapp's um discover feature like instagram's instagram's discover yeah feature. instagram like yeah instagram's discover feature like, where they have like moments where you can look at persons around the world where they, they kind of read you it's kind of like 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 this yeah something like that <laughs> but i don't need to know that black's booty check for for photo shoot like that's that's not relevant to any of my interests i don't need to see usain bolt's official story or oddly satisfying you know you want to feel the peel of them peeling off someone's old skin <laughs> like these are things i don't need like I would, I would prefer there to be four options: one discovery, one friends, one you take a picture or video, and then one for messaging. Instead, I have to go like over here to friends to then like find out the people that I actually want to watch. And it was like, so it's like they integrated the contacts feature with like your messages. So they smash them together. That's that's yeah. how it is. Yeah, essentially. So they have like a bar. Is it set up where? Because I was looking at um, this YouTubers, um, kind of like screen recording for it. 
Uh, like there is a setup where they have like the messages, like when you're speaking to someone, the messages is at the top, and then like that, that you continue scrolling down, you're gonna see like their end, like their stories. Is that mm-hmm. how it is? So, so it's just like integrated completely. So okay, let me show you. Say okay, that's my face. Say um, I hope to God he doesn't have anything weird on this. But the only way, let's say, I would be able to really find my friend Lee's videos, because it's going to be in a complete mess on the Discover page, is if I click right next to his name here, and click the video, which will then... Apparently, he's, like, with his girlfriend at some place. And so that's how, like, I would see what's happening on his Snapchat. If I go over here... I, I I don't see him like anywhere. I see a bunch of sh- crap. People I don't even know. A bunch of <laughs> official stories. Like I don't I don't even see anyone that I know. All these like popular preferred, stories and official I stories. Would've, I would have preferred the area to just be um um oh, like how like the networks and stuff used to have the like little one discovery section. And like, I felt like I I I felt like I would have preferred that area to be just like that. So there's a lot of people out there that don't really pay attention to like news or like what's going on in their country. But if you put it on Snapchat and they clearly go and look at it, like you could accidentally swipe, you could accidentally swipe and you end up on the discovery page where it's gonna be and be like, oh, what's this? And then tap it and watch it and figure out what's going on. So mm-hmm. I prefer it to be like those type of stuff than if it just be like similar to Instagram, someone where it's like displaying random people. Yeah. As some people would say, they believe that Snap, whoever designed this was high at the time. But, um, do know, do not know, do not know. But I do know that there was this great, uh, thing on Twitter. I'm going to see if I can, uh, get the post up on here. Vicky, you may have already watched this inside of our little group. I can get this up on here. And tell me who is all this. I like my own. Oh. Hold on. Okay. Oh, okay. That's not supposed to. Really? Hold on. Having technical difficulties. <laughs> Having technical difficulty. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So tired of Snapchat, bro. I can't see nobody's story. Y'all just gonna update it without telling nobody that's how you feel. We don't get no option or nothing. Okay. Mm. I was scrolling through my phone and I was having a nice day. So I clicked up on my Snapchat and I seen a damn update. I'm like, what the hell is this? Can somebody come and help? How y'all don't give us a chance and y'all updated by yourself? Then I go to people's story and I'm sitting there confused. I check my own story and I barely got some views. Y'all better change it now, cause that shit ain't gotta go. Why y'all showing people's story that my ass don't even know? Me, y'all about to make me mad. I swear y'all about to catch his hand. Cause I'm about to stay on Twitter and just stay on Instagram. And Tell me who is y'all designer? Can we talk this man and man? Y'all ain't give my ass an option, y'all ain't give my ass a chance. Whoever thought of this must be smoking or been drinking. Cause I don't even know what the hell y'all niggas thinking. But y'all better change it fast. And I'm talking about ASAP. Or I'm pulling out my phone and I'm deleting y'all damn app. I see you there dancing, Vicky. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I agree with him. He's, I think that everyone's agreeing with him and I'm surprised that they're having such a hard stance against it. But, um, yeah, so that's it for this week's episode of Tech Talk. Don't forget, we'll be back next week, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will also have our episode of Esports Wrap on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. So feel free to tune in for that. You can also tune in and listen to us on YouTube or on our podcast, unless you're already doing that. 
And of course, I would like to thank my guest, Vikwal, for coming on the show today. You're welcome. And I would also like to thank those who decided to stop in, like Mr. Juan and Jay Brucifer, along with anyone else that decided to follow. I don't have the list up right now. But uh, yes, thank you. And have a great day. <laughs>